Hello and welcome back to Rogue Trader. I'd like to start today by talking about Pascal's weapon, the one we gave him at the end of last episode. So, this one is 10 to 17, this one is 9 to 11, this one is 35% armor pen, this one is 35% armor pen. But, if you have a look at this one, it has nothing in here, right? There's no information about anything else it does, this is just the weapon. But if we equip the weapon, his weapon skill goes up by 15. Kinda odd. Apparently it will also deal more damage than this weapon, despite the numbers not matching. So, what I think we need to do is we need to effectively just try this, right? We need to go into a combat and we need to try each of these. Now I don't know how we can get to a combat. It's next time we go into a combat we'll just need to see, but... Yeah, it's it's interesting. I wonder what happens. Maybe if I equip it there. Oh, I, I, it has to be ranged. Ah, oh. see, I was thinking if I equipped it there, I could do them both in the same combat. I guess what we need to do is we need to go and actually have a look at the calculation for damage. We'll leave them with this one because in theory it might do more, but um, yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? It doesn't seem to line up with um, what it says it does, which either means it has some undocumented things or. Uh, Pascal has some undocumented things, as in maybe he has some things that um, lean into this that it doesn't say. Now, I did actually have a look at his talent screen, and I found one talent which it could be, but I'm not entirely sure, so I want to check that as well, or, or see if that pops up again um, once it loads. Probably should have done this before I went into a loading screen, but there you go. Right, load. So, uh, the talent that he has, that I think it could be, is Forged Purpose. Now, the reason I think it could be this one is because I've been through the rest and nothing else seems to make sense, right? Nothing else seems to line up. But Forged Purpose, the interesting thing about that, is that there's no information on it whatsoever. It says they select a specialized implant, increasing their combat potential in a way suited for their role. But there's no info on that. Now this could mean that in taking this just allowed you to take another thing, like dual combat or something. But I'm not entirely sure what it does. And I think that might be something for us to have a look at. Maybe it's in this archetype? Maybe there's something in Forged World here. Now you see you get the Forged World, you get the Forged Purpose feature, but it doesn't actually say what he has. And then he has these which are available, but these are not things that he actually has right now. Oh yeah, it's also been pointed out, I think for the bottom one, it might be worth taking this for him, Calculated Relations, uh, for times when we don't have Cassie in the party. Um, it would allow us to have a coercion character based on Int. That makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, if anybody knows what exactly is causing this, let me know. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll need to figure that out. Um, but it'll probably tell us in the combat breakdown, I say optimistically. Did I go to the right place? I did, yes. Because I want to go, first of all, Always along to the, the right. Also, it's interesting that this guy is marked. Like, we can talk to him. Oh, wait, no, he was must be the guy who we uh, bought the mutants from. Is that right? The one down here? Let us not dawdle. Yeah, wait. How are these guys back? Did we not release these guys previously? You're back, that's wonderful. Why are you here? I already freed your exhibits. Indeed you did, but how long uh, do you think it'll take me to catch some new ones? I mean, you already have some new ones, apparently. Um, they're mutants in makeup. Okay, um, well I don't really know what to do here. Unfortunately, I have no way to really do anything with this. Yeah, okay. Um, that's weird. Your wits about okay. You. Well, let's leave and head over this way. And we're looking to head to this thing. Because this thing is, yes, where the uh, loot is. Wonderful. Let's grab that. Note from the lantern cache. You're on the right path, seeker. Remember the place. Small key, uh, large windows. Small key, large windows. Look for cache by the windows in Doc Alpha made? Row. Okay, we'll do that when we get back there. I think it's time for us to go into the Liege's Palace this time. Uh, so I guess we'll just walk in the front. There we go. 
The Casabalika trade, ar Xeno artifacts on footfall, and fairly blatantly at that, and the Ordo Xenos is in no hurry to rectify this situation. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um... I wonder if that uh, will lead us back to uh, Heinrichs, because I'm imagining he would not be too happy about that. But anyway, Liege's Palace, quick save. What have we got going on in here? We have, uh, oh, the Liege over on the right. Oh, okay. I kind of expected he might be sitting like uh, some kind of, th I don't know why I thought throne or something, but oh well, whatever. Oh, okay. My patience, you remember the way out, dismissed. The tall man in austere grey clothes make a show of looking past the woman he's addressing. Oh, we got two portraits. Vladame, 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 what has he put such harsh words into your mouth? You talk like you're an imperial clerk, not one of us. The woman who is standing with her back to you lets out an ostentatious sigh, then her tone changes dramatically. Where's my cargo, Vladame? Falco has it, doesn't he? So that's how you do business with your old friends these days. So you don't remember. Then the help will remind you. Guards, escort her out. Okay. Hid Hidari, move. The massive guard leans down to the woman and says in a lowered voice, Jay, get going while he's letting you. Go we'll drown your sorrows at the Amasekus and thank your lucky stars you're able to walk out the door. Won't get the chance next time. Ooh, okay. First an insult and now threats. I see courtesy intact and no longer valued commodity on footfall. Oh well, I'll find myself a better deal. She turns on her heel and heads towards the exit. As she passes you by, she gives you a quick once over, winks at you, then immediately turns away with a flip of her jet black hair. Okay, well we'll go and find her later. The tall man, who has long since noticed your presence, is studying you intently. Vladame Tokara, liege footfall. Please let us proceed to my office. A spread befitting a visitor of your rank is waiting. Your entourage will be accommodated nearby. Okay. Well, certainly, let's go. Please follow me. Oh, wow. Okay, we got full on spread. While you're engaged in small talk, you get a chance to take the measure of Liege Tokara. His expression is aloof and focused, his, ga his gestures curt and firm, and his speech uh, calm and quiet, as though he's used to uh, people always listening to what, he has to, uh, or to what he says. Judging by his observant gaze, he has been studying you in turn this whole time. Vladame straightens in his chair and says in a polite but completely indifferent tone, Let's talk business. On behalf of the elites of Footfall Station, I offer you my condolences, Lord Von Valancius. We mourn Lady Theodora's loss, and we hope the sentiment is taken as a sign of our good intentions and willingness to cooperate. Hmm. Thank you, Liege. A terrible loss for all of us. I hope that under your guidance, the dynasty can recover from this blow and attain even greater power. I am impressed by your prudence. Your decision to arrive on footfall incognito without announcing either the death of the previous rogue trader or your own status. It was quite wise. The rumors will spread sooner or later. It's impossible to keep secret something that's known to thousands of people serving on a void ship. But for now, you are free to reap the benefits of anonymity. As you may have noticed, Footfall is currently in a state of crisis. Its people would benefit from the patronage of a figure such as yourself. Well, I was attacked right at the docks. An outrageous stunt. A show of disrespect for both you and me. 
Sadly, such incidents on footfall are akin to natural disasters, impossible to predict, preempt, they simply happen. Many consider footfall to be a pirate den, but believe me when I say there is a difference between organized crime and gangs of thugs who have nothing to lose. You were attacked by the latter, the Anvers are a gang of punks who spit on our customs and hierarchy. Even their leader is more kin to an ideologue, a rabble-rouser who calls for people's heads, not a commander. Sooner or later we will find him and have him strung up, and that will likely cool his followers enthusiasm in the carefully built facade of composure you sense anger it appears this man is not used to losing control that exactly what's happened hmm um well I'm sorry for the loss of your assistant what your words seem to perplex him for a moment but his face remains cold oh that yes her death was a regrettable development who is the woman the wardens threw out? The dame's expression hardens and he makes a frustrated gesture. A dead woman walking. Some, however, call her J. Hidari, a small-time hustler with big ambitions that will lead her to a sticky end. It's strange. A small-time hustler, even a particularly audacious one, wouldn't likely quarrel in public with a figure as important as the liege of footfall. What seems stranger is that the liege knows the small fry by name. She is irrelevant, since I'm the one in control of the situation on Footfall. I can speak on behalf of all its noteworthy residents. What's the situation in the region? Troubling. Xenos raids are growing more frequent. Trade is suffering and fringe worlds are going under. Rumors of atrocities being committed by enemies of humanity are causing excessive panic due to their exotic nature. The core of the Imperium forces in the Coronas Expanse has departed for the sector's borders to combat the Xenos threat. There has been no word from them for a while now. Then again, with the distance and the current issues with astropaths, that is not entirely out of the ordinary. Still, we are not yet alone. From several of the worlds hit by Xenos attacks, we've received reports of fierce warriors who descended from the sky and entered the fray. The fragmented accounts lead me to believe that the blessed Adeptus Astartes are operating in the Coronas Expanse, and I await news of their victories with great anticipation. So that'll be Space Marines. Commonly known as Space Marines, these genetically engineered super soldiers are the most powerful and ferocious warriors of the Imperium. Have there been any Xenos attacks on Footfall? No, there haven't. Oh, a new rumor. Interesting. Uh, oh, that the Space Marines here. Attacking Footfall in general is not a particularly reasonable thing to do. Many ships are docked here at any given time, and even the listed weapons on board them would make for a decent fighting force. And that's not even to mention the firepower that our esteemed merchants have shamefully hidden from the station's customs officials. For us here, Xenos are more of a source of income than a threat. Ladame freezes, gauging your reaction. Okay. Um. Let's see. Are we talking about dealing in Xeno artifacts here? In a manner of speaking, miraculously, Vladame has managed to frame the last sentence as a question. Footfall is a place where anything can be bought, and mind you, where anything can be sold. I can at last, I do not approve of the fear of Xenotech, one must no one understand the enemy. I'm convinced that your connections with Footfall will allow you to broaden your knowledge, an understanding of Xenos considerably. I will see to it that your curiosity is satisfied in every way. What sort of patronage do you seek from me? Protection. Not military protection, but a different kind of security. You have, of course, already encountered difficulties with warp navigation on your way here. I'm afraid the scope of these difficulties extends far beyond this area. Reports of disrupted routes and ships vanishing during short jumps are coming in from across the entire sector. 
Communication with the Calixis sector has always been extremely unstable. Of the ships that have dived into the Maw in recent years, none have returned. The last ship that came through the Maw from the other side was struck by a temporal anomaly. The jump took almost two decades in real space time. Interesting, is that Argenta's ship or is that a different ship that's been stuck in a temporal anomaly? Huh. You've heard of periods of warp instability, including cases where the Maw would become completely inaccessible for navigation for years on end, thus temporarily cutting off the Corona's expanse from the Imperium. Even so, Vladame's words are particularly alarming. It seems that something has had a profound effect on the Maw. When I hover over this, am I going to get Chaos the Arch Enemy? Oh no. Uh, see Catrix Maledictum, a huge warp storm. Ah, oh, okay. Um, and I guess this is the excuse for why we are alone in the Coronis Expanse. Like, instead of it being like, well, why couldn't you get something from somewhere else in the Imperium to help? This is your reason why. It's like where you have the superhero movie, where they have their solo movie. And it's like, well, why didn't all the other superheroes join in? Well, you have to create a reason, right? It's the, oh, uh, the, there was too little time. There was bad reception, so they couldn't let anyone else know, you know? all of that sort of stuff like this is the excuse to be basically like yeah this is why everything else is inaccessible and why you're kind of stuck to sector after sector for now at least that's what i'm seeing and that brings us to our main issue foodfall is a repair shipyard and a trading post we barely produce anything ourselves and are largely dependent on incoming shipments especially food shipments this station naturally has some reserves, but the supply issues didn't start yesterday. Footfall would be obliged if House Von Valancius would assist us by sending a contract for food deliveries. Hmm, I can't be the only one you've asked for help. Naturally, I tried contacting other rogue traders, but the terms of House Chorda would have bled Footfall dry, and as for the esteemed Caligos Winterscale... Instead of a food shipment from him, I received a transport, the Navika, packed with refugees. I had to send them off to Foulstone. So many extra mouths to feed would have only worsened the crisis further. I suppose all these warp fluctuations must have created more pressing concerns for Lord Winterscale. And so I put my faith in you, the third and last of Footfall's allies. Um, okay. So Footfall is cut off from all of its shipments, local gangs are running wild, and local hustlers are throwing tantrums in your residence. Are you positive you're in control of the situation? Ladame listens with a stony expression. You are very perceptive. Well, now you know what you're buying. The situation is difficult, but should you decide to offer your support, you'll forget about the existence of trading hubs other than Footfall because you won't have more loyal friends anywhere else. So what are the terms of the deal? It's simple. Delivery of food shipments from your fertile worlds. Janus, I imagine. I'm quite familiar with that jewel of the Von Valancius Protectorate in exchange for fair payment. Okay. Let's see where we're going to go here. Uh... Well, let's see. Get on your knees and ask properly. The payment will be unfair. Very well, I'll help you. I'll help you, but not with desire for profit. I have no interest in obtaining favors of in kind or becoming your patron, only saving people's lives, or I won't help you. Interesting. Um, let's see how we're gonna do this here. Well, let's. It's it's a, it's a choice. So let's just eliminate uh, things. I'm not gonna choose five, right? And I'm not going to choose one. So that lowers us down to three choices, which is much easier. I'm also not going to choose four, because I am interested in profit. So, that leaves us with two and three. Like, you know, I'm a friend of the people, but like, you know, I gotta make some money somehow. So, will I say the payment will be unfair as I'll be robbing you blind, but you'll remain in charge? Or will I say I'll help you with the food shipments? Hmm... I think I'm gonna say two. I think that I think that's fair. I think I wanna say two. I, I think that what I wanna do is I wanna get the extra payment 
and I want to set ourselves up as like, you know, we're in charge around here. That's that's what I'm going for. Um, I, I don't think we're after fair trading here. The payment will be unfair as I'll be robbing you blind, but you will remain in charge. Do we have a deal? That is a reasonable business proposal. I wouldn't have even gotten this much from the esteemed Incindia Chorda. She would have robbed us and asserted her own authority, and so I agree. He pauses and adds with a dry smile. You're a dangerous man, your lordship. Okay. Um, interestingly, it says Chorda said that she would put in her own authority. We didn't have that option. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, um, there's an establishment, uh, establishment not too far from here. They let people torture fake Xenos there. I want it to stop. Ladame gives a curt nod. It will be dealt with. What is happening in the shadow quarters? Why is there a quarantine? Oh, that, he grimaces. Who knows, it could be an actual epidemic, or perhaps the two families that started it all just came down with food poisoning at the same time. We're on a space station. The best solution here is to isolate the area and wait for the problem to resolve itself. Uh, I've been told that when the previous leash was faced with a similar situation, he ordered the entire asteroid be detached and dropped into the star. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Food and water. When I wish to help the people, I will have medicine delivered to them from my ship. I wish to enter the zone. Let's say this. I wish to help the people in the quarantine zone. I'll have medicine delivered to them from my ship. I can't bar you from doing so, but I can't help but note that it is not the wisest course of action. With all due respect, your lordship. Okay, we didn't get in the zone here. But I'm hoping, it says wait for the situation to resolve itself, so I'm hoping we can get in the zone later, having cured the people inside it. I think entering the quarantine zone without curing the people will lead to bad things, but maybe I'm wrong. I'd like to know more about the Anvers gang. Why haven't they been dealt with yet? He grits his teeth before answering. I've been using all my resources to delay the moment when the station is hit by famine. I haven't gotten around to the Anvers yet. As detrimental as they are, they're no players. When their leader dies, the rest will scatter. Where does one go to make a few deals here on the station? Here, I am the main dealer on the station, and it would be disrespectful of me to suggest you take your business to footfall traders of lesser importance. Still, you might take an interest in a few people here of note. For example, Reverend Hieronymus Doloroso. The servant of the Ecclesiarchy is rumored to purchase sacred relics from captains and other traders don't seem to be keen on becoming his competitors. If you're looking for goods that can entertain you, find Octaviana at the establishment called the Adeptist Amasecus. The chemical bliss that she offers is refined and possesses a satisfactory degree of purity. Just don't ask her to pour you her signature drink. It's meant for a common footfall rabble, not a discerning clientele. Okay. I have other questions about footfall. Rest assured, I will be candid. My lips are bound by the oath of service. What exactly interests you on footfall, this abode of merchants, xenotech traders, and only a few bandits? Um, something tells me you used to be a bit of a bandit yourself. You aren't wrong. My path was long and bloody, but in the end I rose from running a gang that had staked its claim to a, ra to a treatment filter station to becoming the liege of footfall. Many died to make this possible, and those who survived figured it would be more convenient to put me at the head than to continue the slaughter of the turf war. I can only hope that my elevation and the peace that came with it have done the station good. Um, what will happen if I, t if I tell everything I've just heard to the leaders of the other gangs? No, I think, uh, I, I don't know what we've heard really, but okay. Um, well, much has become clear. There can be no misunderstanding between us, your lordship. So in theory, our characters have similar backgrounds. 
What oath were you referring to? There is a certain custom on footfall. Any rogue trader who arrives at the station and docks is to be considered its absolute ruler, and their liege and the liege their loyal servant. That makes me your servant. The dame's arrogant bearing contradicts his words. I guess it makes sense that you would want to keep the rogue traders on your side if you're a merchant, um, like station, because effectively they're able to one go around and change how trade is done in the sector and two trade with everybody no restrictions it just makes sense however as long as you remain incognito it will be difficult for you to use this privilege keep this in mind if you wish to communicate with the less knowledgeable inhabitants of the station for them you are an ordinary visitor to footfall okay so I could blow your brains out and then instate a new leash? I don't think so. Um, I'm just going to say what's a fascinating custom. Useful, too. I defer to your judgment, your lordship. Who holds the reins of the Xeno goods trade? The Casabalika Mission, a criminal syndicate that has seized control of the entirety of the coal trade in the sector. Xeno's creations are in high demand, so every single colony has a Casabalican agent or two. Opposing their commercial interests is a lot more dangerous than using their merchandise. A pale ghost of a smile appears on his lips. Still, making friends with this organization is as profitable as it is dangerous to make enemies to them. And it just so happens I've managed to earn their trust. And on footfall, they conduct their business under my watchful eye. He sent you a meaningful look. I have no more questions. I'm glad to have satisfied your curiosity. All right, I'm interested in your work, in your wares. I am at your service. You can expect the most generous discounts. Okay. Well, we'll have that because that's free. Stub revolver. We'll have it. All right, all of that's free. Profit Factor says I can get a Telepath Staff, which gives us Visions of Death. I don't know what that is, but okay. Uh, that's fine. And you get Bladed Boots. Ooh, that's kind of cool. This would actually apply to Pascal. Okay, so to get into level 1 is actually potentially good. Oh, and a new Bolter. But we need a lot more Profit Factor to get there. I think getting to level 1 is not a terrible idea. I'm just seeing what kind of levels. So it goes down to like 70 down here. Which was about the same for the others. I wonder if that's going to be the end of the chapter or the end of the game. Like I'm wondering what, what the scale is. Because obviously when we left chapter 1 to go to chapter 2 we got new stuff. So I'm wondering if from this point these are the shops. You need a lot of uh, reputation to get to rank 2 though. Hmm. Let's, let's see. How, what, what are they buying? Heretics Trophy Xeno Artifacts. Huh. Okay. Well, how much do I get if I trade everything? Uh, quite a lot. So I get 9,000. So it's a big investment to get to the next thing here. Okay. Uh, let's unselect some things here. Is there anything that they buy that other people don't? I guess these things are bought by the cat, uh, by the um, Hieronymus. Uh, but no. Maybe we shouldn't sell like the. I guess melee weapons and things tend to sell well anyway. So we, they're not specific to these guys. So let's get rid of that. Okay, how much do I need? I need six thousand. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Get rid of Misk, because those will sell to anyone for the same price. Okay, get rid of melee weapons here. Ranged weapons, melee weapons, ranged weapons. Um, okay, ranged weapons. Ranged weapons, melee weapons, melee weapons, melee weapons. That's pretty much perfect. Yeah, we'll trade. Cool. So a huge amount of our stuff has just been traded. We do have stuff that they won't buy, like fuel, which is cool. But now we're at this level, we can get everything here, which is awesome. Okay, what is the telepath staff, by the way? 
What's that do? Uh, the target must pass a willpower resistance test. If they fail, the target suffers a bunch of stuff. Mental damage. So, staff level, which is what? Where's the staff level? How would I see? How would I know that? Um, doesn't say. Okay. Or at least I can't see it. Uh, plus Psychosai rating, plus 30% of the target's current wounds. Okay, so that's a really good one to do at the start. Okay. Potentially. Oh, it's, uh, there we go, it's power level 9. So that would be 9 plus, well, for uh, Adira, that would be 9 plus 2 uh, right now. Which would then... Yeah, so it does 40... Uh, I don't know why I'm having such trouble. 41% of the target's current wounds. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like a very, very good one to do it just to like to uh, to hit a high health enemy. Now the thing is, it only really works if that enemy also has bad willpower. Because um, you know, otherwise you're talking about doing uh, nine damage, which is much less interesting. And then the bladed boots. Cool. I do want to go and speak to him again, because I have more questions. I realized that I should have asked more questions first, but that's fine. Yeah, he can have the bladed boots, because he can he can actually do these. Uh, yeah, because when it hits, when they hit an opening, which he will. That's good. Right, in here again. Do a quick save. Hello. Uh, oh, that was leave. Okay. Uh, the button I pressed was leave previously. Have a backup plan. Okay. And then there's nothing else here? Yeah, there's nothing else here. Oh, that makes life easy. Does that mean we're kind of... There we go. Lord Captain, I am pleased to report that the inspections have been completed and all identified system failures have been resolved. The void ship is ready to depart footfall. The crew is waiting for your further instructions. There are also a number of issues that need addressed. That'll be a yes then to my question, which is, does that mean we're about to leave uh, keep footfall? Your eye on the price. Answer is yes. Are, we ta are you taking me to the thing or to my ship or are you just taking me out just outside? That's fine. Oh. A well-groomed young man calls out to you. It's Chorda. I recognize that name. He's clean-shaven and dressed in clothes that are expensive but unshowy with a bright aquila embroidered on a prominent spot. Noble sir, minutes of your time, if you please. I am Bastian uh, in Durama Bastal Chorda, the youngest cousin of House Chorda, envoy of Incendia Bastal Chorda, rogue trader of the Coronas Expanse by the grace of the most holy emperor, and you must be an envoy of Theodora von Valancius. I noticed that you arrived on the esteemed lady's ship. Chorda, hmm. They are some of the most influential rogue traders in the Coronas Expanse, but not on footfall. This station is under the control of House Winterscale. Something tells me that we are about to hear a most curious offer, says Abelard under his breath so that only you can hear him. Okay, let's hide the truth. Quite right, I'm Lady Theodora's envoy. Splendid. It's a pleasure to be speaking with an equal. Truth be told, I get a little flustered when in the presence of the powers that be. Bastian smiles meekly. What did you want to speak with me about? It is a master of the most, uh, of the utmost delicacy. You see, you've been to the residence of the liege. Vladame almost certainly appealed to you for assistance in arrangements of shipments to Footfall. The Von Valancius Protectorate is framed for its abundance of its main agro-worlds, uh, Janus. It would be odd for him not to seize on such an opportunity when Footfall is on the verge of famine. However, the Chorda dynasty pursues its own interests on Footfall. We have already announced our terms to the Liege, but he is stalling, I imagine, in hopes of getting a better offer from you. The Chorda dynasty believes, Bastian smiles and gives a slight shrug, that cooperation would be preferable for both rogue trader houses. If you refuse Vladame, thereby forcing him to agree to a deal with us, the Chorda dynasty can promise you a share of the profits from the future contract, as well as certain other prerequisites. Everyone benefits. 
the Emperor's most loyal servants should be more concerned with carrying his will through the stars and less with divvying up profit among themselves. Argenta says disapprovingly, but quietly enough as to not interrupt the negotiations. Especially when the well-being of one of the Imperium's worlds is at stake, even one such as Footfall. Behind your smile, Master Bastion, teal shadows swirl. Others may not see them, but your worry cannot escape my eye. What are you afraid of? Your house's wrath should these negotiations prove fruitless, or the wrath of House von Valancius? Idira, who was yawning in boredom a moment ago, flinches and clutches her, fa her face, her fingernails digging into her skin. They're coming, again. Brothers are the ones who came before. I just don't get it. Do they all have a death wish? Um. Well, I appreciate the warning, Idira. I'm going to draw my weapon. What? Bastion stares at you in surprise, then turns around. Okay. Death to the off-worlders. The Anvers rule fruitful. Well, he just got shot. That's not I'll good. I'll make an example out of you. I'll turn you into corpse starch. Okay, where do people go? So we go. Twice dead Lanny goes. Anver thugs. We want to shoot him. Then it's a guard. Then it's Argenta. So we kind of want to shoot this guy first, right? So we're kind of looking at us being like here, so we can get an angle on them. Okay, then Argenta goes. Argenta? Because she goes so early in the turn order, and only Lanny should go fur like, uh, should go before her. I think I'm going to stick her here, with the lo and then we'll move her forward. I wasn't on us originally. Okay. Yeah. Then we get Anver Thug, Anver Thug, Pascal. So Pascal could potentially go over here to try and deal with these guys. That wouldn't be too bad for him. Let's stick him... Uh, let's stick him here for now. He might be in the way of the shot, but that's fine. Then it goes Anver Thug, a couple of Anver Thugs, and a couple more Anver Thugs. So, Cassia, you're actually wanting to stay, like, fairly back here for now. Okay. Then we get, uh, Armored Anver, Anver Thug, Anver Thugs. Now, so most of them will be dealt with by Pascal. Um... Abelard, I mean, obviously, I think Abelard, we're looking at somewhere, like, up here for him. Unless we're looking at, like, back here with the... You know what we might do with Abelard? We'll stick Abelard here. The logic being that we can run him up to anyone who runs forward uh, later. And then Adira, I think this is actually a good spot for you. You're well late in the turn order. You can shoot pretty much everybody from that position. I think that's going to be good for us. Wonderful. So, first step, we need to do these uh, things. Now, these are not going to be perfect just due to uh, where we move people. That's fine. So, let's chuck this on Adira for now. That's backline. Sorry, that's uh, rear backline. It's going to be where Argenta is going to be, which is here. She's going to end her turn here, so we're going to stick... I won't stand for it. What do you mean, no line of sight? Okay, she's going to end her turn here. I refuse. What do you mean, no line I'll of sight? There we personally. go. That's fine. She'll end her turn here. Then front line, uh, I just have to take a stab in the dark. I'm going to guess, like, here. My gut tells me it's a bad okay, idea. Okay, I'm going to guess, like, here. It's as good as done. That's fine. We can always move it next turn. Right. This is the thug that gets to have a turn. Yep. Uh, shoot him. We killed one and almost killed another. Fantastic. Um, we're then going to stick some stacks onto... Uh, these guys are out of range, unfortunately. See if anyone actually has health. I guess you. I'll make it happen. Then we're going to do a joint analysis. Wonderful. Good turn. Twice dead Lanny comes forward, takes a shot, we dodge it. Wonderful. Guard, I don't know what you're doing. No, I needed Pascal to get there so that he, we can test his damage numbers. <laughs> okay, whatever. Oh no, you're going to end your turn here now. So I guess we're going to shoot like this. It's also suggest Someone suggests I use Wildfire because this would then allow you to, do, uh, to stack versatility quicker. That does make sense, actually, yeah. 
Yeah, because then it will cost zero, which will then give you a stack of versatility, which, yeah, okay, I could see how that could work. God uh, not on turn one, because it costs way Be too much, and we heart. already have ev what we want to do for turn one, but I could see on future turns doing that. Uh, shoot like this. None can escape the Emperor's judgment. Nice. Revel and slaughter. For the weak. Then Faith we'll do a one of worthless. these. Who goes next? Uh, you go. Okay. Shoot him. I'll do it. Wonderful. That worked pretty well for us here. And turn. So these guys start moving forward. Pascal. I really want to get a melee attack with him, which I guess means we're heading over here. And then I'm going to do a melee attack. As the tactical imperative dictates. Request denied. Uh. Guess I could just shoot him. Uh, how does that not do more damage? This does extra damage, but it's not actually doing any extra damage. Look at that. Yeah, it says it does extra damage, but it doesn't show it on the thing. That's interesting. Anyway, um, let's have a look here. So, how did it roll the dam? How did it do damage here for us? That's fine. It did. It it crit. Okay, that's fine. So. Damage. Um, base damage. So he got 9 to 11. He got 5 from joint analysis and 5 from pinnacle of weaponry. Okay, so we know joint analysis is our ability. Pinnacle of weaponry comes from this one. So first attack in combat with plasma, melter, or power weapon deals additional damage. Ah, equal to 5. And it's decreased back to two for the rest of combat. Okay. So, if we go and have a look. Is this a power weapon? There you go. That's where the damage difference is coming. That's a power weapon. Now, why does it give 15 weapon skill? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. It just says it does. Okay. And the weapon skill makes us more likely to crit. So, actually, the damage difference between this and our Omnicide Axe is not as much as you might think, because it's a power weapon, which means it's actually 11 to 13, and it gives 15 weapon skill. That's a different kind of... that's a different matter. Okay, cool. Uh, I might just reduce this guy's damage, actually. Let's do that first. Okay. Uh, we could also... can we dash through him? Not quite. Okay. Let's just shoot him then. Okay. Seems fine to me. These guys move forward. Haven't quite reached front line yet, but that's fine. Cassia. I want to give uh, Argenta more turns. Can I do that? No, I need to move forward to do that. Okay, let's do that now then. That is foolishness. What do you mean it must be that high to activate heroic if acts? That were possible, Emperor, All right, move over here. Give me strength. This isn't a heroic act. I'm afraid not. Not a heroic act. It is just an ability. What is something is broken here? There we go. I don't know why it thought that was a heroic act. Uh but okay. Cool. We then want to inspire to Isn't increase this a damage. Job for the serves? We then want to give her another turn. At which point we go crazy. As the Emperor commands, I act. Each strike is a ho, ho. <laughs> We got another revel and slaughter next turn, which means that we can then um yeah, we can have running gun next turn. Nice. Good turn. He just walked forward. He didn't even do anything. Oh, interesting. Do you see it? It had the heroic act thing pop up on us for a second there. But wait, the heroic acts aren't showing here. 
Oh, I think something's broken on the UI, unfortunately. Uh, so Frontline's actually going to end up being over here. I kind of want to charge directly. Ah, I see, something has broken on the UI. Look at this, because that's showing Daring Breach. Okay, I'm just going to reload. Uh, but I think I want to charge in here. Uh, even though I, though I should take an attack of opportunity. Actually, I might not take an attack of opportunity because I'm still within that original target's um, area of... Um, like within its attack area. So I shouldn't take an attack of opportunity because I don't move out. So I should be able to charge past, hit the one in front, and then turn around and hit the one behind us. I think. There we go. Now it's better. Okay. So I think I should be allowed to do this. Without taking a tactical opportunity. I took care of this one. Nice. Then I can attack like that. Or yeah, then I can attack like that. One fewer target. I could then potentially do this, which will restore all my MP. Actually, given it restores all MP, I should probably do something like this first. Yeah. We'll then rule do the that. Stars themselves. Then go here and start attacking. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Then again. Indeed. Then another step. At your back and call. Reduce to dust. Okay, I have a lot of movement. So I could then move over here and attack Follow this one. My need. One fewer target. Okay, and then I still have movement at the end of my turn. So I can move. I'm trying to think. That's not actually border. That's not next. Well, that might be next to them. I was thinking, is that next to them for the purposes of... Um, yeah, us getting an attack of opportunity. It might be. Are the best ones. It might be. Cool. Anyway, that's good. Uh, Adira? Oh, it's also been pointed out with Adira. Claim the bounty might be showing diff uh, wrong numbers. So that does 30 to 40. Claim the bounty, it also claims us 30 to 40, but it doesn't. Claim the bounty should do 68%. So we need to manually work out how much it does. So yeah, that would not kill that guy. Just an interesting note. Can I shoot this one from here? No. I can actually only shoot one target. Well, whatever, I'll shoot you then. Nice. Uh, and then I don't think I can, I don't think I'm even in range. No. Okay. Oh, hello. There's another guard out here on our side. <laughs> it's so funny given uh, that we've already killed nearly every enemy. Let's make this the front. Uh, let's go up here and make this the front line. There we go. Can I see anyone from here? I don't think I can. No. Okay, in which case, uh, joint analysis. Cool. He gets his turn. Awesome. That's an interesting idea. Run up here. Dash forward. In battle. Can't still can't see. Revel and slaughter. I'll do it. Run and gun. Just using every ability to get, like, actually far enough up so that we can attack. And then last thing I did was I would do that, that, so it must be burst. I will not. Uh, do it. Guided by faith. For you, my emperor. Nice. Doubt is for Reload. The awesome. Oh, I actually said I could do another shot. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, I messed up. Uh, I don't think I can hit the opening, but I could just hit you. Activate calculus fury nice. So, if we go and have a look at that damage there. That was, again, a crit. Because it, it's critting more because our weapon skill is higher because we're using the Omnisign Axe. Yeah. And Pinnacle of Weaponry only adds a plus one. Huh. Why does that only add plus one? That doesn't make any sense. Wait a second. No, that, that's not what that ability does. Pinnacle of Weaponry. For the remaining of... The, uh, yeah, for the remainder of combat, the bonus damage is decreased to 2. 
that that's not what that does. Now, here's the thought, right? Um, the first attack is equal to five. Now, what if instead of decreased to two, they had actually made this decreased by two, right? Because that would make sense, because this is our third attack. That would then mean that you're doing negative damage on the next attack. But let's not worry about that. It's too far back to have a look at. But just an interesting thought. I'm not saying that they've done that. I'm just saying it'd be interesting if they Beyond had done it that way, huh? Right, we moved. And I'm going to do this again. Okay. Um... Also, I realized I was saying this as a dance macabre, which is how we were told to say the poem in school. But then I, I watched a show completely unrelated, and they, they called it dan dance macabre. And I was like, well, I don't know. Now, now, I'm, now I'm like, was I just told the wrong thing in school as a joke? Possibly. Uh, obviously, the as a joke bit is also a joke, but... Um, yeah, I want to give this guy a full turn. Can I hit him with some stuff? Can I hit him with voice of command from here? No. Okay, give him another turn. I'll paint your death in colors. But yeah, it could also be one of these uh, American versus UK things, which nearly always comes a up. A tactically sound approach. But we'll see. I should have uh, sworn enemy to him. Reduced to it dust. didn't matter. Oh, right. We're done. <laughs> I expected there to be a cutscene or something, but like, it was like, nah, we're all, we're all just chill now. Uh, we'll keep that for now. Ooh, interesting stuff. Chain axe? Okay. Okay. Black armor we probably don't need for now. Uh, yeah, we'll collect the rest of that. that every that's not even everyone, that's just what he had on him. Note, Sector 2, watch your backs, make sure you're not being followed. Okay. Visit the uh, Anvers base, it Rise says there. To the top. That's not good that he's dust. dead. That's probably not going to end up well for... Like, that's not going to end up as a good thing for us. Um, we should probably go back and speak to the... Um, I don't know what I picked up there. I didn't mean to pick up the heavy armor. But whatever. Uh, that's fine. Um, I think it was this I picked up. But whatever. Uh, to be cool. Made. Right. Uh, chain axe would be for you, maybe? Well, it's one-handed, so actually it wouldn't be for you. It, I guess the only person it could be for right now is us. Uh, it does do more damage. It has better armor pen. Alright, I guess it is better. Th is it better than both of ours? Mm, kinda, yeah. I think it's better than the power maul. Just the main one for us. There we go. Uh, that, that'll be fine. Oh, I guess we never should have had the power mall equipped because we had the master crafted one. Let's not worry about that. Uh, cool. That seems fine. We've got a level up to do at some point. Right. Quick save. I just want to go in here and have a chat to um, this guy and see. Anyway, uh, Pascal's weapon. I'm going to keep the ominous iron axe on him for now because it although it may do less damage in general than the other one it um the weapon skill gives you a much higher chance to crit which i think you. is worth it i think the chance to crit is very much worth it uh hello um well a man who introduced himself as a servant of House Chorda asked to have a word with me, and then, imagine the odd, someone blew his brains out. Vladim doesn't look surprised. The Anvers again, I presume. These anarchical degenerates don't care whom they shoot, be it my servants, yours, or those in the employ of House Chorda. I suspect that the agent wished to negotiate a deal that would have you refrain from hindering in Cindia Chorda's efforts to strangle us with the threat of hunger and demand of our obedience. If so, I don't believe I'll be mourning the man's passing very long. Hmm. Well, I'm beginning to resent how frequently the people I converse with on the station wind up dead. It is indeed lamentable. 
but there are times or but these are the times we live in and this is footfall his denizens don't always look for a reason to spill blood i'm not going to accuse him of killing i did think it was a very um convenient thing that if the person died it might you know he would benefit but they could all they did also just seem to be shooting like everyone including us which would not have benefited him so yeah i don't know anyway um i think i'm gonna end the episode here thank you very much for watching next time we're gonna level up and then we got a lot of places to go we gotta go to the pub in the shadow quarter uh we gotta go find where the adverse gang are located there's many things anyway thanks for watching see you next time goodbye